Let's work through the second question on activity 9, which deals with logistic regression. So I'm going to load in the reacquire data set. And this has information about whether or not a company was able to reacquire customers that had previously churned by giving them a special offer. So we have customer ID, whether or not the customer was or was not reacquired. And this is what we will be predicting, yes or no. Uh, the lifetime one, the number of days they were originally a customer before they churned the value of the offer that was given to them, the lapse of time between when the customer originally churned and when the offer was given to them, the price change of the product that customers used to be buying and that customer would be buying now if they came back, and the gender and the age of the individual. All right, so the levels of reacquire are yes and no. When the logistic regression predicts the probability, which level is this the probability for? Well, it always is going to be predicting the level that comes last alphabetically, so it will be, be, it will be predicting the probability of yes, that the customer is reacquired. Okay, so let's fit a simple logistic regression model predicting reacquire from lifetime one. Maybe how long the customer was originally with the company tells us somewhat about their probability of being reacquired. So we have to use a new command, not LM, but GLM. So I'm going to do M left arrow, and then the syntax of GLM works just like it did with LM. So the name of the variable I want to be predicting, reacquire. So we acquire, and then a twiddle in my x variable, the name of the variable I want to be predicting it from. So lifetime one, and that lives in the reacquire data set. And a special thing about logistic regression is that we actually need to add in this argument called family equals binomial to turn on the logistic regression uh, framework. Otherwise, if you leave this out, you'll get an error and it won't do it. So we'll run this, and let's go ahead and get a summary of the model. And then also look to see just what that model looks like. I'll visualize the model and get the summary. And so we're being asked, does the probability of reacquiring a customer increase or decrease with how much money the customer has spent? All right, well, if we go back and look at the plot right here, the probability of yes, the level that we're predicting, is going from 0 to 1. And we see that the lifetime of the customer previously uh, was uh, defined, I thought was in days, but actually I'm thinking about this now, and it was actually the lifetime value of that customer uh, during its first lifetime. So this x-axis here is the amount of money the customer spent with that company uh, before he or she churned. So this makes a little bit more sense now. We see that as we consider customers with more and uh, more value in their first lifetime, the probability of yes is getting larger. So the probability of reacquiring a customer increases with how much money the customer spent during that first lifetime. So the probability increases with money spent during the first lifetime. And we can confirm this by looking at the output of summary. How do we know that? Well, if we look at the coefficient of lifetime, we see that it's positive, implying the probability of our level of interest is getting larger when we consider individuals with larger values of x, larger values of lifetime 1. It's the coefficient of lifetime 1 is positive. All right. So we're looking at the summary of the model. What part of the output tells us that, indeed, the probability of reacquiring changes with lifetime one in the same way you saw from the plot? Well, this is really just what I answered right here. The coefficient of lifetime one is positive. So if you remember, the actual value of the coefficients that I get from a logistic regression don't tell me all that much. It's the sign of the predictor variable that's important, because that tells me whether or not the probability of the level of interest increases or decreases as the value of x gets larger. So the coefficient of lifetime being positive confirms that, yes, indeed, the probability of reacquiring is larger among customers who had uh, larger lifetime values during the first time they were with the company. All right, using the numbers from the summary of the model, at what value of lifetime one is there a 50% chance of reacquisition? Well, we can actually figure this out by taking the negative of the intercept of the equation divided by the coefficient of our predictor variable. So what I can do is I can just copy and paste here. I'll copy the intercept, divide by the, uh, 
coefficient of the predictor variable, and then take the negative of that, and I can copy that whole expression and click run, and it'll just send down that one bit of a line. So we see that a customer lifetime value of $327, rounded to $328, would be the value at which we would get a 50% chance of having reacquisition. And we can confirm that by actually adding some lines if we wanted to to the plot. We can add a line horizontally at a probability of 0 0.5. And then we can add a line vertically at what we're saying the value of x is that we have a 50-50 shot. And we see that, yeah, that calculation is correct. All right, write out the equation for the logistic curve. Then predict the probability that a customer who spent $400 before churning would be reacquired. And the probability that customer would not be required. Okay, well, in general, we know that the formula for the probability is P equals E raised to the B0 plus B1 times X power divided by 1 plus E raised to that same quantity. So that is essentially the equation that I want to evaluate, plugging in X of 400 and then B0 and B1 from the summary. And to do this in R, what we have to do is actually use the EXP function because we can't just simply do e caret to raise e to a power. So we're going to say e exp, and then in parentheses, b0, which is this guy right here, plus b1, this guy, times our x value, which is 400. So that's e raised to the minus 2.69 plus 0 0.008 times 400 power, divided by 1 plus, and I can save myself some time just by copying, pasting. And we can see the probability of reacquisition in this case is 64%. And one thing we know about the probability of the other level is just 1 minus that value. So I can do 1 minus this to get the probability of not being reacquired. So I'm going to put a little hashtag yes and hashtag no here to remind myself that this corresponds to the probability of the level of interest, the one that comes last alphabetically, yes. 1 minus that is the probability of the other level. So we have 64% versus 36%. Uh, All right, F wants us to predict reacquire from offer. So we'll go ahead and use the GLM syntax again. Predict reacquire from offer. Data equals reacquire, our data frame. And then I have to add in family equals binomial to make sure that logistic regression is turned on. I'll visualize that model, and then I'll look at a summary of that model. And then we can talk about the model. OK, so this says that we'll notice that it does not really look much like a logistic curve. And it doesn't. It looks kind of like a straight line. Um, and this is because it is just a very small chunk of that logistic curve. So this wants us to add the argument x lim equals uh, minus 20 to 80, basically to change the range of values on the x-axis. So I'm going to change that. 20, minus 20 to 80. And we can see that, OK, indeed, we are actually fitting a logistic curve to the uh, probability of uh, reacquiring versus uh, offer. But we were just looking at that very small segment, um, basically uh, between maybe 20 and 30 or so uh, in the model. So it looks roughly linear all over that range. OK, so. Do we have to comment? You'll notice that looks like in a straight line. OK, so I guess we don't have to comment here. Yep, it's a logistic curve. Why not? All right. So the last question asks us to fit a multiple logistic regression model because it's really rather silly to just try to predict the probability of reacquisition from any one of these predictors individually. We know there's a lot of different reasons that there might be variation in probability of reacquisition between customers. And so let's take into account all that information with the multiple logistic regression model. So the syntax is still the same, GLM, predicting reacquire. And in this case, I'm going to predict it from lifetime one, the amount of money the customer spent before churning, the offer size, the length of time between churning and when the offer was given, the price change of the product the customer likes buying, and then also gender and age. Let's put all that stuff in there. And we'll put in the data argument, saying what data frame that it's in. And we have to add in that family equals binomial. All right, so let's make sure the syntax is right. 
All right, looks like I typoed something, so we'll fix that. And let's get the summary. All right, so when we get the summary, we'll get all the coefficients of our multiple logistic regression model. The values themselves don't really tell us anything all that important immediately. It's the sign that tells us how the probability changes among otherwise identical, identical customers when they differ in just that one particular variable by some amount. All right, so we're asked, among otherwise identical, identical individuals, how does the probability of reacquisition change with lifetime one? Well, we see that the coefficient is still positive here, so we say that among otherwise identical customers, the customer with the larger value of lifetime one, in other words, the customer who spent more before churning, has the higher probability of being reacquired. Now, unfortunately, we can't tell you what the difference in probabilities of reacquisition is. Because it's a nonlinear curve, the difference in probabilities actually depends on exactly what the lifetime one values of the two customers I'm comparing. So my comparison has to stop there. All right, so that looks good. Let's knit that HTML to make sure that I got that second part uh, completed. And looks good. The key thing is to make it knit correctly, you have to make sure that your RMD file that you're working from is in the same directory that your uh, uh, data file is in. All right.